Hey y'all, Chef Irix Guy here, back again with a follow-up review for the Masterbuilt Digital Electric Smoker. Now, what do I think about it after using it for, well, I'll tell you how many times I've done two butts on it. I've done kielbasa, I've done pork chops, I've done ribs, I've done a uh, tri-tip, and what do I think about it after using it for many smokes? Well, for starters, this little piece right here makes the purchase of this particular Masterbuilt a no-brainer for me because what I can do with this <clears throat> is you know as I'm smoking I can stick this in with wood chips in it of course and then twist and it dumps the wood chips in the wood chip tray so you don't have to open the door because <clears throat> if you open the door of the smoker your heat escapes and obviously this right here is the wood chip tray and what I do before I start smoking I load this up but see that mechanism is right there so it dumps additional wood chips in the tray so it's a it's an ingenious design the uh <clears throat> the drip pan on the bottom does an incredibly good job and you can see it's got a hole there and that hole connects to the rear and then i've got the drip tray over here because i cleaned it out and i was letting it letting it uh dry out before I pack up see so that goes there captures all your drips and that's you know the ease of cleanup for this master built digital electric smoker is what makes it great and a lot of people are like well man it doesn't have a glass door you know I've had electric smokers with glass doors before here's the thing when you've been smoking in my case a pork butt I've been smoking a pork butt all night and all day. After I take that pork butt, pork, pork butt out of my smoker and I eat it, the last thing I immediately want to, the last thing I want to do after I pull it out is clean the inside glass while the smoker's still hot. So inevitably what's going to happen if you get a smoker with a glass door, unless you've got a crew that takes care of your stuff so you can enjoy your, your food, Unless you've got a crew, you're going to probably not clean the glass. And then, you know, once it kind of hardens, it's going to be very hard to get off. <clears throat> also, I've found that the smokers with glass, they create uh, problems because you'll be staring through. You know, if your glass is clean, you'll be staring through looking at what you're smoking and you tend to get impatient. What I like about this smoker is that I have no reason to open it. Again, check out the link within this video's description. You can find the wireless uh, meat temp probe and then also the wireless ambient probe like I use. I just set it and forget it. This water pan, and this is what's so cool. So this water pan, when I smoked my most recent smoke with a 10.3 pound pork butt or pork shoulder or also known as Boston butt, when I smoked that all night and all day, I still had water in my water pan. Didn't have to open it to re reload the water pan. Obviously, the water pan helps with moisture control. And uh, you can also get aromatics from the water pan. If you put like garlic clove, onions, maybe some 100% apple juice, you can utilize a water pan that way as well. But what I do, I just usually just use water and then that uh, better moisturizes my meat. You can see here, and as I hinted earlier, cleanup of this is easy because basically you pull your water pan out. And by the way, there is another grill grate. There's one, two, three, four. One goes right on top of this water pan. I've got it in the dishwasher. But see this piece right here, you just kind of clean the top of it. Obviously you take your water pan out and clean it because it's gonna catch a lot of the drips. And then the, uh, the drip pan in the bottom, you can take it out. I just, I don't know if it's recommended, but I took my drip pan and cleaned it in my dishwasher. And then of course you can wipe down the interior and obviously the grates. You know, you wanna, you wanna make sure everything's cleaned after you smoke. One of the things I like about this, see how easy these come out. And like when I smoked my, when I did my 10.3 pound pork butt, boom, I just had it like this. I had my water pan there. See, you can put a grill grate directly on top of your water pan if you want to, see. But, when I smoke, and, and again, it depends on what you're smoking. You may be doing vegetables, you may be doing meats, 
you may want to use multiple levels. But if not, if you're just smoking a butt, for example, this right here, my 10.3 pound pork butt sat on here with plenty of room and it was, you know, not directly on top of the water pan, but one row up, I got exceptional results. I mean, it was, it was better. And I'm a barbecue snob, you know, when it comes to going to get pulled pork and all that, it was better than something I would go to one of the top tier barbecue restaurants in the South and get. And the best part is I smoked it. I smoked my butt right here in the mountains on my own deck. So, you know, that, that was, that was really nice. This thing, it's got the air damper. I keep it about halfway, depending upon the amount of moisture that you want. You may choose to use the damper differently. That's how I use mine. That's how I've used mine pretty much every smoke. And I get, I feel I get a, a good balance of moisture control, uh, but also smokiness. The uh, digital display right here. This is nice because you can set the temperature, you can set the time, and you can forget it. Now, one thing I will say, the temperature probe, and I think that's it. See back there in the back, right down there where I'm pointing. I think that's the temperature probe that, that's integrated. Yeah, you can use that. Nothing wrong with that. But depending upon which rack or racks you're smoking on, you're probably going to be, it's probably going to behoove it's probably going to behoove you to get something like I use, ambient temperature probe. And the one like I use, I've got four that I can plug in. So I could have three ambients and one meat temp. I could have two meat temps, two ambients. You know, maybe I put an ambient at the bottom and an ambient probe at the top. That way you get an overall feel, an overall view inside your master built electric smoker while you're smoking without having to open it. So I can say, okay, well, the ambient temp closest to the water pan is X degrees. And then on my top rack, it's X degrees. You know, depending upon what I'm smoking, I may need to adjust the uh, temperature. One thing that is cool about this, and, and again, this right here, this temperature is going to match with where the probe is, the integrated probe. So what I do like about this, though, is that I can set the temp and then I can look and you wouldn't have to use ambient probes like I do, but I like to be really precise. So you can set that. And I found, uh, and I'll post some videos. I may already have them up. Subscribe and check out my Master Built Electric Smoker video playlist. But I found that, uh, you know, the temperature that I set here is not necessarily a one for one because, again, that, uh, that, temperature probe location that's, that's built into this integrated unit is only at one spot inside. Whereas if I use my aftermarket temperature and meat, ambient and meat probes, I can position them in multiple locations or just one location. You know, if I'm doing one rack, like when I did my butt, I used, I stuck one probe in my butt for my meat temp. And then I stuck the second probe behind the butt to get the ambient tip for that temp rather for that exact layer or level within the uh, master built electric smoker where my butt was sitting. So this thing, this works really well. One minor gripe that I have in strong sunlight and it's off right now, but in strong sunlight, sometimes the display is a little bit difficult to read. You've kind of got to cup your hands. I think they could have done a better job with legibility during strong sunlight. When the sun starts to set or if it's shady, it's perfectly visible, but I think they could have done a better job with uh, with making that more legible in bright sunlight. I mean, a future enhancement for Master Built might to be instead of having this top, maybe they would shift this so you look back at it, and maybe there would be some sort of sun hood of, of sorts, and maybe they could put a different type of uh, display in there. You know that, and again, for this price point, it works great. You know, I'm just trying to nitpick. And again, you know, you can you can expand this video's description and click the link there to find a master built smoker like I'm using. I mean, these things can get to be super expensive. But this one, again, what sold me on this, the ability to refresh the wood without having to open the door. Also, what sold me on it, no glass. You know, that's just something I'm gonna get frustrated with. My smoker is not gonna be 
I'm not going to be able to see through the glass if I'd gotten one with glass. Personal preference. You know, I don't have a crew to come out here and clean my smoker after I finish smoking. So I do it myself. But you can see what's nice, and again, this being a follow-up video, after the number of smokes I mentioned that I've smoked, and it all been delicious, by the way. But, you know, just to see the inside here, you know, it's it's developing that good, let's just call it barbecue patina. See, you've got that, you've got that hickory and applewood that's just starting to cake the interior and the crevices. Looks really nice. What, I, what has really impressed me about this smoker is the, uh, you know, a lot of smokers, especially ones at this price point, they're not really that airtight. I mean, they don't, you know, they don't seal in the, you'll, you'll see air gaps and you'll see smoke coming out around the door. I haven't experienced that at all with this one. And actually, that's an incredible feat of engineering because typically I would expect to see some visible air gaps, you know, seeing some smoke escaping around the door this door latch i didn't even have to adjust it out of the box it was already on there check out my assembly video but you could tighten it if you needed to but as as currently configured at least mine out of the box perfect it provides a reassuring and tight seal but it's easy to open and close ultimately as i mentioned i opened it one i opened it two times the first time is to put, uh, well, actually, yeah, I open it three times. The first time is to open it, pull out my wood tray, load it up with my initial load of chips, set my cook time, set my cook temp, and then I close the door this, and, and latch it. The second time is when, I, when it's hit the temp, the smoke's coming out, I open the door, I put my meats and or veggies in there, and then I close the door. The third time that I open it is when I'm getting my food out because it's done. And again, not having a glass window is super nice because I'm not sitting out here. I mean, I come out here to smell the smoke and the meat and the vegetables, check out the view, check out my raccoons. My raccoons are not out right now because they're nocturnal. They like the night. But, uh, yeah, when I come out to check that out, the last thing I want is a window where meat and vegetables are taunting me. You know how it is? You look at food or when you go to the grocery store and you're hungry, it's not a good idea. The same thing with a window on an electric smoker. And that's, again, Master Built has done, in my opinion, phenomenal job with this. Again, I didn't go with the fancy stuff because I want something that's cost effective. This, and I am on a kind of little bit raggedy wooden deck. Um, the feet that are included are tall enough and I've monitored the temperature below it. The feet are tall enough to where it doesn't make my deck warm. Obviously I don't want to catch my deck on fire. The outside of this unit around it can feel visibly warm to the touch, but never hot. So, you know, I'm able to use it on my deck, and that's a huge win. The uh, There are some legs that you can get for this with wheels, and, you know, that's nice. Especially if, like in my case, I like to smoke right here in front of the view, and then I like to put it over against my wall for, uh, you know, for storage while not in use. But, and then I use this cover. <laughs> And I've linked the cover like I used within this video's description. It was it was cheap, and uh, obviously, you know, I use my wood chips and my probe that I was talking about earlier. All that's linked within this video's description. Would I buy the master-built digital electric smoker again in this configuration? No doubt. I don't need any more. And see, here's another thing to consider. And again, price may vary. Expand this video's description and click the link there. But I found that, you know, seasonally, seasonally rather, smoker prices tend to tend to fluctuate. So I felt I got a phenomenal deal on this. Such a good deal, actually, that let's say hypothetically that this failed. You know, let's say I neglected it. It got rained on. I forgot to cover it. You know, I knocked it over and, and damaged it. 
if I get at least, I would say if I get at least 10 quality smokes out of this, in my professional opinion, if I get 10 quality smokes out of this, it's paid for itself. Now, ultimately, I'm going to use this for several years before I, you know, I've got gas, gadget acquisition syndrome. So I'll probably be looking for another electric smoker in a few years just to have a new toy to play with. But, you know, this is one in a worst case scenario that I feel that if I get 10 smokes out of it for this price point, it's well worth it because you got to factor in how much you would pay at retail to go out and buy barbecue. And it's barbecue that you didn't prepare yourself. It may not be as good. Probably not going to be as good. You're going to spend more. You're going to have to tip the waitress. I mean, a lot of factors to consider. So this is a money-saving thing. Also, the cool thing about it is wood. These little chips, even for my 10.3-pound butt, I used a minimal amount of wood chips. And it tastes like it came right out of a proper hickory pit at a barbecue restaurant. So... It's easy to maintain that consistent temperature, low and slow. It's electric. It's easy to maintain a consistent temperature without having to feed it fuel, without having to feed it charcoal and or hickory. I mean, obviously, you need to replenish the hickory every few hours to keep that, you know, to get your desired level of hickory taste or applewood or mesquite, whatever, you're, whatever kind of wood you're using. But the heat source is electric so it's consistent and it doesn't require a lot of fuel i mean the only fuel is electricity so you know you'll you'll be using you'll be running your electricity meter when you're cooking with this but that pales in comparison to the price of charcoal also the convenience factor you know when you're using a traditional charcoal or wood only smoker you're out there monitoring the temperature if it drops you've got to add more fuel more wood if it gets too hot You've got to, you know, you got to regulate using your vents and, you know, maybe move some of the meats to indirect. It's, it's a hassle. You know, this, you get your temp, you replenish the, uh, the hickory chips periodically, you set it and forget it. And again, I don't open that door until I'm ready to take it out. And it's always delicious. And in the case of my 10.3 pound butt, when I did the 10.3 pound pork butt, pork shoulder, Boston butt, whatever you want to call it. I did a few loads of hickory chips, and then I let it run overnight. I didn't start replenishing hickory until the next morning, and I did it throughout the next day. But the two initial batches of hickory, and then an extended smoke overnight without adding hickory, and then adding hickory you know, throughout the next day, it resulted in perfect pork. I mean, it had the bark. It had the penetrated smoke flavor. It was delicious. So... This master-built electric smoker, the digital electric smoker, if I was if I was shopping for a digital electric if I was shopping for an electric smoker today, I would go with this particular smoker. And again, expand this video's description and click the link there. I know there's fancier ones. You can spend a lot on these if you want to. But the fact that it's digital takes the guesswork out of an analog knob. Because there is there is a guesswork factor with an analog analog knob versus digital where you see an actual number in front of your face this for me and i'm not a super strong dude but it's small enough and lightweight enough for me to pick up by myself and move to the other side of my deck for storage so size and weight's not an issue but if you wanted to you could add the optional legs with wheels it'll add a little bit to the price tag and you may like that, that convenience of just rolling it instead of having to pick it up. But yeah, this smoker is great. I have zero regrets. And again, subscribe to my channel, ring that bell icon when you do. Check out my master built electric smoker video playlist and check out all of my master built electric smoker videos that I have now and ring that bell icon to be notified whenever I post other new videos. Thanks for your viewership and y'all have a good day. Hey y'all, Irix Guy here. I hope you enjoyed this video and please be sure to subscribe to my channel and when you do, ring that bell icon to be notified whenever I post another video. Thanks for your viewership and y'all have a good day.